Now, how can we show that this particular rule that we are guessing to be true is actually true? How can we concretely prove this result? What we will do is we will use algebra for this. Let's say our divisor is D. The numbers in this case are n1 and n2. Now suppose if I divide n1 by d, the quotient is q1, the quotient is q1 and the remainder is r1. So n1 then can be written as d times q1 plus r1, right? because it's a divisor times the quotient plus remainder. That's the number. Similarly, suppose if I divide n2 by d, the quotient is q2 and the remainder is r2. So now n2 can be written as d times q2 plus r2. Now let's multiply n1, n2. So if we multiply n1, n2, we have d times q1 plus r1 times d times q2 plus r2. Now let's expand this. We get d square q1 q2 plus d times q1 r2 plus d times q2 r1 plus r1 r2. Now if you look at this, the, the first three terms of this expansion, you can readily take a d common from that. So let's do that. d times, let me write the remaining portion in red. And in a bit you will see why I'm doing this. So let's do this. Let's by d times q1 q2 plus q1 r2 plus q2 r1 and then we have the rim, uh, product of r1 r2 and this was my n1 times n2 now see if i divide n1 n2 by d I'm supposed to get some quotient Q3 and some remainder R3, right? So if I divide N1 into, if I divide N1 into, N1 into is another number. So if I divide it by D, then so obviously I'll get some quotient, let's call that Q3. And I'll get some remainder, let's call that R3. Therefore, I can write N1, N2 as, N1, N2 as D times Q3 plus R3. Now compare these two expressions. Compare these two expressions. See, it is readily understandable that they look very similar. I mean, Q3 can as well be this red portion and R3 could be equal to R1, R2. And in fact, if R1, R2 is smaller than D, that is indeed the case. Because then I can do nothing more with R1, R2. I cannot extract any more Ds from R1, R2. So R1, R2 would be equal to my R3. What if R1, R2 is greater than R3? So if R1, R2 R1, R2 is greater than D, I'm sorry, not R3, D, then I can extract some more Ds from R1, R2. So I will divide R1, R2 by D and extract as many Ds as possible from R1, R2. And whatever will be left out, whatever is left out, left portion, left out portion,
is the finite fi is the final remainder final remainder so this gives us a concrete proof of the conjecture that we made in the previous slides our guess was that if i multi if i divide n1 n2 by d if i divide the product of the numbers by the divisor then the remainder is either the product of the initial remainders or if the product of the initial remainder is greater than the divisor then obviously we have to divide this product again by d the divisor and get the final remainder and in this particular slide we of course to prove that idea algebraically this arithmetic of remainders leads to many exciting and interesting problems and uh, we hope to look into them in some of the upcoming videos a direct result of this arithmetic of remainders is the theory of congruences uh, which was developed by gauss we will talk about that in one of the subsequent lectures. Thank you.